Each beat of the wing of an eagle or a fly, every drop of rain or sunbeam from the sky, every smile of the lover, every gift from above, always in God's time. Ever in God's love. And before you go to school, you have all of this within you. Now, in Los Angeles, when talking to my young friends, I told them a great number of things that happened to me, how that I was considered to be the meanest child that ever attended that school because I always fought with the teachers. I didn't agree with them upon anything. And the teacher and I would have fist fights. Now, this is actually true. And my stepsister used to have to carry me home after the, uh, we'd have one of these. And she'd take a note with, with herself to our parents saying that Paul today had a fight with me and uh, we would like to see rectification of this and punishment and that's what they meant so or get him in line with being going to school with the other children now the fact was that this, my stepsister would always tear up the note it never got home but uh, they knew at home what had gone on and so they'd be in touch with the um, teacher and some and these things would uh, rectify themselves. Now, to tell you the truth, there's really a funny thing that occurred many years afterwards in the follow-up of that, because Mrs. Hill, who was then the uh, principal of the school and always sent me home uh, with my stepsister, Katie, met Katie one day on the streets and says, they said, Mrs. Hill said to her, you know, I thought that Paul was the meanest child that I'd ever seen in my life until I had my grandson, my grandson come to school. And she says, now Paul is laid in the shade. <laughs> so I suppose I held the record for many years. And as we're learning about the most secret part of ourself, we try techniques, we try different uh, spiritual exercises to try. We're using our creativity essentially to learn how to work with divine spirit. When people follow, they often say, gee, do you have to go over such rough stuff? And the master says, well, you should know what it's like before I kick the big ones out of the way. <laughs> The master is going through life kicking the big ones out of his way. And somewhere else it said, you know, have compassion for everyone because everyone carries a burden. And so it is. We look at our own selves and say, oh my, my troubles are, are really the worst awful thing that could ever happen to anyone in this life. And of course, at the same time, his neighbor or an associate is also carrying a burden that is equal to his measure to the neighbor's measure. And so it is. Life gives us what we are able to bear. And sometimes we come to the point where we say, will there be any more? Will this have to go on? And Sometimes the answer is long in coming. You know, we almost bend 
under the weight. Like an overloaded donkey, we say, just one more stick on this pack and it's all over. You know, I'm going to crumble. <laughs> but such is life. And when we're through a particular experience, we look back and say, well, it's a miracle. And then I found myself listening more and more, in my case, to classical music, but it doesn't have to be classical for you. But whatever is your form of music or your form of news or whatever, whatever way you, you, you let the, out, the external world into your internal world, if at some point you're finding you need an edge for health or for peace of mind or something of that nature, look to what you're putting out there or what's around you, what's coming in, because what's coming in is going to go back out there and it's going to, then it bounces like an echo, it comes back to you, goes out there, comes back, and so it strengthens and eventually gets a very strong, has very strong influence on you. And this influence can be for either beneficial things or harmful things. So the choice is yours. Every thought, word or deed either purifies or pollutes the body. And it sounds like a simple statement, but it's a powerful one. So are you. 
Hello. Is everybody feeling like they are part of the Holy Spirit? Closer to God, if you will. That last song that just played, the song of who, as they call it, is actually one of their main worship songs. They do claim that when you are singing this song or listening to this song, that you are reaching vibrations that are close to God. And I decided that I was going to join this cult because, you see, this cult's very interesting. It began several, so Joe says, I'm one with the Lord. Joe's one with the Lord after the songs. This cult began several, several years ago, and it's still going today. It pulls from pagan and Wiccan religions, which we all love to talk about here because my haters are all very, very pagan cultists, and they hate me. So every time I talk about religion that pulls from paganism, I'm apparently attacking people. But let me tell you, my channel is to talk about cults. I cannot talk about cults without talking about religious cults. And unfortunately, a lot of the cults out here have been based off of people such as L. Ron Hubbard from Scientology, Aleister Crowley from paganism. I don't know what you want me to do. Don't get mad at me for covering the cults. Get mad at your leaders for having created religions and turned them into cults so that several, several decades later, I would be here on this platform trying to warn everybody of cults because apparently we need warning. I joined Ekin Kabar. I, I know I'm joking around with the name. I, it's, it's a ridiculous name, isn't it? Ekin Kar. <coughs> Excuse me. Ekin Kar. Very, very interesting religion. And I got a bunch of emails because, I don't know, I guess they were like, this girl signs up for behind MLM and a bunch of anti-cult websites, so we should totally send her an email and tell her she should join our cult. That sounds like a great idea. Just like when Hunbots message me asking me to join their team. And they tell me that they saw my my Instagram. And I'm like, I really don't think you did, though. I don't think you did. I'm anti-MLM all over it. What do you mean? Why would you write me? Same sort of thing. So since I had received several emails, because Canada has a whole set of this cult here. And I'm assuming, since I'm also in Ottawa, they're trying to get as many people from the capital of Canada into this thing as possible. They were like, this seems like a good person to join our cult. And I was like, I am a great person to join your cult because I'm going to join it. I'm going to study the crap out of it. I'm going to read all of the books on it. And then I'm going to expose it as a cult because this is ridiculous. It's a redonkulous cult. So I'm going to show you guys the book that they sent me. They sent me this amazing book called Ekinkar, Ancient Wisdom for today. How past lives, dreams, and soul travel help you. Yes, you. You, me, whoever else needs to be helped, I guess. Helps all of us find God. Yes, find God with this cult. That's the best part about it to me, is that it's like, we help you find God. And I'm like, uh, okay. Everything to do with this cult is literally like, how to get closer to God. I don't want to keep rambling on because I'll be rambling on forever. But this is the book that I got sent to me. The cover is a little bit fancier in person. Unfortunately, my camera is down because my daughter played Roblox on my computer, got angry at it, and then spashed it. So that's where I'm at with my uh, technology for streaming these days. Woo, go me. So this is the book they sent. But like I said, it's a little bit fancier when you get it in person, okay? It has like some pretty lights on it and the symbol on it and, and whatnot. So I decided to dive into this because I'm, of course I'm going to. Like I'm not going to read a book that a cult sends me. Hello. So I was like, let's go. This book has re 
been reviewed and published under the supervision of the Mahanta, the living Ek master, Harold Klemp. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, Harold Klemp. I remember this dude. This has to do with that Paul dude too. Okay. All right. I think I know what I signed up for. Oh no, this will be fun. So now today we're going to have some fun. <clears throat> As you can see, the book goes through what is Ekinkar, which it, it explains the whole religion. We're going to get into all of it. They believe in soul travel. So they believe that your soul is you and that your soul inhibits your body. They believe in past lives. They believe in, basically, they believe in fucking everything that you could think of to believe in if you were going to start a cult. They're like, let's just pull from here and pull from here and pull from here and then we'll have a religion. Like all the cults seem to do, right? They have this whole thing about dreams where they talk about how you need to keep a dream journal. Your dreams will tell you how to get closer to God, etc. They're very into karma. So a lot of you have been seeing me talking a lot about karma lately. Yes, I am joking about these cults. Karma is actually scientific and logical. Now they go into this, uh, which I've gone into myself about how the law of karma technically could be proven by science because it makes sense that if you do bad things and are around bad people, bad things will probably happen to you. And the same for good, right? I mean, that just makes sense. It, it's kind of like causation and effect, right? So yes, scientific, okay. But should it be brought up when we're talking about cults and religion? Probably not. Just saying. They definitely believe in reincarnation. Like I said, they believe in the whole like past lives and they think that if you're bad in your past life, then in this life, you're going to be punished. All that kind of thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. They believe in the God worlds of Ek. And Ek is basically just like, it's almost like they're God, but they believe in God, God, like Christians and Catholics kind of believe in God. They pull from that. But Ek is, is like the person that they, they look up to. So we always have a master of Eck. And for example, right now it's Harold Klemp and we'll get into who the original one was and all that. That'll be so much fun for me. They are all into love as all religions and cults love to talk about love. Okay. It, love of God, love for each other. They talk about spouses. If you're in the Mormon religion, they'll even find you a spouse or several of them. That sort of thing. Love is always a part of every religion, every single cult, even in MLMs, right? They use your family against you, that kind of thing. The Ekvidia. Again, this is, the Ek is like their study of what they're doing. So you know how in Scientology, you have to get up a stupid pyramid thing in order to make it closer to God? Well, with them, it's the Ek. The Ek, and it's really fun to say. I totally, totally think that everybody should just take a minute and just go Ek, 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 just for fun, because that's fun to do. Then, of course, they, they go into how to solve problems, because every religion basically has to describe to you how to live your life in every single way, all right? You would not know how to solve problems in your life unless Ek told you how. And then you will see right here, I just want to point this out, it says, who will help you? Which makes me laugh because I'm like, yeah, who will help you if you join this thing? But who? <clears throat> Why am I so coffee right now? I haven't even smoked yet today. Maybe that's the problem. Who is that wonderful song? That beautiful song that we heard at the end of this, right? Uh, which was getting everyone closer to God. That was that song. And I know it, it's kind of weird, right? Because when I first went and looked up this music, I was expecting more of like a hymn kind of thing. Like I grew up very, very Catholic. Okay. French Italian, very, very um, 
very Catholic, Roman Catholic, if you will. And when we went to church when I was growing up, which like my parents even used to wake us up on like midnight on Christmas Eve and drag us there. Okay. We went to church all the damn time. And when we would go to church as like Catholics, whenever we were doing like worship songs, right? They were always very hymny. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of you have heard a, a Catholic like hymn song and how the the religious songs in that religion, like I said, they're very like hymn like, very harmonizing, very that kind of thing. But this wasn't. I was expecting who to be very much of a harmony because they're like, yes, when you sing this song and when you listen to this song, the vibrations of the song is supposed to get your soul closer to God. So what would you picture for that? Probably more of a hymn like, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, you know, some, something like that. Instead, as you saw, they sang. They sang like on Passover. And it, I was kind of surprised. I was like, oh, this is this is the song? This is the one that's supposed to get us all closer to God? Okay. I mean, if that's how it goes. So I just found it really funny. And as you see, they say that the who will help you solve problems. Because as with a lot of these cults and extremist religions, if you will, which I still say are cults, <laughs> whatever, um, they, they're they basically like, you need this to problem solve. You will not be able to problem solve unless you sing this song and get closer to God first. And I'm like, I think that you need to give people more credit. We have initiations. And in future, I'm actually going to be showing you someone that has left this cult. Somebody that has left this cult and has been speaking out about it. And they actually go into detail about the initiations that are given into this cult. It is very much like a Mormon thing. So if you're familiar with the Mormon cult, I mean religion, uh, they do these these meetings where you have to go in and you have to tell them your whole trauma, tell them your whole life story. <laughs> Sorry, they judge you um, and, and this sort of thing. They do that here. Th this is what I, they've pulled from every single religion, like every culty thing that you could pull from another religion. This religion was like, let's take that <laughs> and let's make it part of art. So the initiations into each area of this is, is really scary. They can even be physical. Um, it, it's honestly like going to university and joining a frat house and then being initiated, although it's into a cult. And it's way deeper than that and way more scary. Which is funny because I'm pretty sure that you're not allowed to do hazing and initiations in university anymore. You were when I was going. But you're not anymore. So, you know, a little bit sus to me when a religion is like, we initiate you. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, even with the Catholic religion, I just needed to be baptized. I was a baby for that. I don't remember it. So what do you mean? You need to initiate me. I don't like this already. Are you going to brand me like Keith Raniere? I, I, I'm i not into this. You know, I, I start thinking about that. And then, of course, we get to the Eck Masters. Which, maybe if you're into BDSM, that sounds sexy. Okay, whatever. I can be too, but th that's not what this is. Okay, that's not what this is. This is literally like the man that you look up to, the Eck Master. He is the one that gives you all your advice. He's basically the one that you praise to. He talks to God. He teaches you, if you will. He's the Keith Raniere of the cult. If you don't know the references I am making, Please do go and check out my pseudoscience and cult playlist. We get into a lot of the cults on there. So, very much like that. And right now, it's Harold Klemp, who is their Eck Master. We have the play of soul because, again, these people are very into the soul. The soul is basically the bread and butter of this whole thing. Your soul is its own being. It's you. And it just travels around this world in different lives just continually trying to get closer to God. And in every life, you might get a little bit closer, 
but maybe you didn't listen to your ec master as well as you should have in your last life okay so now you're here and harold klemp is going to tell you all how to live and then maybe in this life you will get closer to god and my favorite part i will share with you as well because it talks about <coughs> sorry becoming liberated from being the victim and i love this shit okay i won't even lie as someone that is a survivor with ptsd oh no she brought it up bingo card put that on there um hearing things like this about how these religions and cults are going to teach people how to become liberated from being a victim makes me laugh because let me tell you all if you are in this thing you are a victim right now of a fucking cult. So no, the cult that is victimizing you is not in any way, shape, or form going to ever, ever teach you how to be liberated from being the victim as they're victimizing you and manipulating and indoctrinating, okay? So I always have to point that part out because in every single one, they have this area. And it is really to make it so that while they're victimizing you, you're like, oh, I'm liberated. <laughs> and that drives me nuts. Then, of course, they have how to take the next step on your spiritual journey. Which, again, like I said, they believe in the whole different life things. And how your spirit's just kind of going from life to life to life trying to get closer to God. Maybe one day you'll be a neck master. Lucky you. Harold Klemp just needs to die first and then it's yours. So, of course, they have this whole thing about how on your next spiritual journey, because even though this cult is supposed to teach you how to, you know, do this all properly so that your spiritual journey can end, apparently they still prepare you for the next one. Don't ask. I didn't write the book. Okay. Then, of course, you got a bibliography and index. No one cares about that. They have filled this thing up with pictures of these people. I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, here are a bunch of people being indoctrinated into the cult because they actually do seminars. Oh yeah, this place has conferences and seminars like an MLM. All right, if you guys thought Bob Larson was funny, you really got to check this out. This, ladies and gentlemen, is our dude, Harold Klemp. He looks like Stephen Hassan on crack. Okay. I'm just going to say it. I'll say it. So here we have the very first page. And I even went through, by the way, to like make sure that the one on here was the same as the one that I have in my hand. Because, <laughs> yes, I do have this in my hand. Um, it reminded me of the 70s Ford hymns we had. Do you know what? That's funny you say that, Joe, because this cult was actually created in 1965. And so... I feel like that is what they're doing, is they're doing those. It, it is a lot like 70s folk hymns, right? Um, so they tried to be like a new age, as a lot of these cults did, that kind of came out during the hippie movement. They were like, oh, you guys don't like cults? Well, we have a new age one for you. So a lot of people ended up falling into them. Um, and that's one of the ways that they kind of tricked people is they were like, see, we're not culty. Look at us. You do these really cool songs and folk hymns, like, you know, your favorite singer. Look, we're like Janis Joplin. Woo. And then, and then people would fall for it, uh, unfortunately. So it is kind of funny that you said that. The egg master will set me free. I have the flying spaghetti monster is already setting me free every day. Oh, how to purchase items. Sounds like a great bill. <laughs> right? <clears throat> and that's what I mean. Like, it, they literally give you instructions. When you're in a call, it's like, you cannot do anything for yourself. You do not know how to purchase anything, okay? You need them to tell you how to do it. You don't even know how to open your eyes in the morning. They, they, they need to give you instructions. So, I've gone through this little ebook area that I wanted to go through with you guys. And I've then all, I've also gone through the book. Because, yes... I got the damn thing here. And I just want to share with you actually what they say when they're showing Harold's picture because they don't have it on here. Oh, yes, they do. Oh, that was weird. And, and again, same thing I have here. Different picture, though, which made me laugh. So the picture I have of Harold is a different picture than the one that they're showing you guys on the screen in the book that I just had sent to me. 
new book different than the one on the screen from 1995. So I'm assuming that the one I have in my hand has been published since then, although it's very hard to find much information on the publishing of this thing, because boy, do they try to hide that. Uh, but th that's what I'm assuming. Since we're in 2022, you know, this is the 95 version, but trust me, all the words are the same. All of them. It says the spiritual leader of Ekinkar is Harold Klemp. I refuse to call him anything other than just Harold Klemp. The Manhattan, the living Eckmaster, his inspiring and practical approach to spirituality helps thousands of people find greater freedom, wisdom, and love. His teachings uplift and help them recognize their own experiences with the light and sound of God. And I mean, if you ever needed an introduction to someone that was a cult leader, <laughs> it would probably be this exact thing. Like, I was like, holy crap! They just give it right to you. Like, this is our cult leader! He is going to help you with all! And I was well, a little bit like, oh, well, <laughs> this will be great. I can't wait to get into this book. So then we, of course, the first chapter, lovely, is what is Ekinkar? Because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I think you need to explain it because... It sounds like you just pulled from every single freaking religion here, right? And then you were like, yeah, this sounds good. Let's let's do this. People will believe in this. I like it. And this quote, I had to show you. We're not going to be going through the whole book today. I'm going to be doing a full review on this book in future. But I had to show you guys what was in the book, what they sent me. And then I had to read you guys this quote, because this quote is like, it, it kind of is the quote of this religion. Like, if there was any quote I could find that this man has ever said that would kind of sum this up, it would be this one, which is also probably why they put it right at the beginning of chapter one, what is Ekinkar? <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. And then it just gets cultier and cultier from there, I promise. And we're going to talk about all of it. But we need to do this in, in parts because Jesus Christ or Harold Klemp. <laughs> the Eck! How do I how do I use their Lord's name in vain? Am I just like Eck? Eck? I don't know. So it says there are many routes we can take to heaven. God has established so many different paths and means for us that there is a way for everyone. If you are ready. The spiritual exercise of Ek will help you find your own custom-made approach to the kingdom of God. Harold Klemp, the Golden Heart. And now, you know why I get so freaked out whenever Ash Mufar goes into these speeches about how he has a great heart. Because it's, it's kind of something that cult leaders do. And Harold Klemp is the... Epiphany of that, okay? He he literally calls himself the Golden Heart. They also have a very big obsession with comparing everything to school. It's it's very strange. I showed you guys at the beginning of all of this. Basically, um, our our lovely Paul Twitchell went into a big rant where he was talking to kids about. <laughs> How he was a bad kid in school? Like, I'm not really sure what the, the moral of this story was supposed to be that he was teaching the kids about, but it was interesting. And they, as you can see, it, it goes into this. I, I also just have to show you this because it says, our teachers have been many. Moses, Jesus Christ, Muhammad, Confucius. Confucius says, no join this cult. Okay, so I had to. Buddha. Krishna, Zoroaster, Socrates. I don't, I can't pronounce half of this shit. I'm fucking Italian, not Greek, okay? Copernicus. And then we get into Martin Luther. And I was like, well, that was a, an interesting one. And then they're like Shakespeare. And I was like, leave William out of this. He doesn't deserve to be here. That is, that's my role model. What are you doing? Emerson, Einstein. The list goes on. And trust me when I say the list actually does go on. Like, they grab everything. 
from the Old and New Testaments, as you see, the Torah, the Kabbalah, the Quran. Like, they literally grab from every single fucking religion. When I say that, I am not just saying it. Like, they really do. And they're like, yes, we do this. This is what we do. So, yeah, that is the book that I am diving into right now. How did they finish the street? <laughs> uh no see um that's supposed to be like a, a title a very important title to uh people that are very religious and often looked up to by religions which is why i refuse to use it for him and you will just see me calling him harold klemp the whole time old harold okay i i refuse i refuse this guy cursed my computer it wants to update again <laughs> Maybe he did. Okay. Maybe he did. Ek, 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 patang, zoom, boing. Boom, baby, boom. <laughs> we'll add some up, pass some up. Yeah. <laughs> Just because we have to. But yeah, uh, as you see, like, it, it's literally pulls from everything. Everything. So now I just, I want to give you guys like a really quick, this is kind of like a quick intro to what we're going to be doing over the next little while with this cult religion etc because i really want to do a book review like a full one on the book that i just gave you a little preview of because it just gets on and on and like it gets worse okay it, it goes on we have understanding karma can liberate us from being a victim it's one paragraph i'm gonna read this paragraph to you and i want you to listen to how they say that karma is gonna liberate everyone from being a victim okay once we accept the law of karma in our lives, we are liberated from being the victim. We begin to see underlying spiritual causes and act accordingly. Problems become opportunities for spiritual growth. Karma differs from fate or destiny because it encourages us to take an active role in life. The law of karma requires the spiritual seeker to follow the highest code of ethics. The rules are simple. Ekankar is not a passive path to God. The end. Two paragraphs where they're like, you know what, if, if you're a fucking victim... You did something in a past life to cause this. All right, this is your karma. So just get over it. Know that. And then just keep on trying to get closer to God. It, it's basically the summary of that. <clears throat> As we know, a lot of them do a lot of uh, victim blaming and shaming. And this whole thing, this whole chapter basically goes into that. About how it is your own fault because in a past life you did something wrong. So now if you're a victim in some way in this life, it's karma from a past life. And then that's supposed to liberate you from being a victim because then you're in control of you being victimized or something, you know? And I'm like, no, that's, that's not how that goes. That's not right, sir. As someone with a trauma disorder, let me tell you, that is not how that fucking goes. <laughs> that doesn't work, okay? And if anything, that just makes it worse because now, now you got people sitting there going, well, what did I do to deserve that trauma? You know, and that's just, we're, I'm not okay with that. I'm, I'm not, I'm not okay with a religion that tells people that they are at fault for whatever, like they are being victimized for because they did something in a freaking past life. So this is karma somehow or some bull crap. No, no, I'm not okay with that. I don't like it. It's very dangerous way of thinking to me. And it needs to stop. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the better ones. That's like one of the better belief systems. <laughs> That's like the best one I could pull up just uh, for a quick example of something that I felt I could actually talk about because I was like, no, this is wrong. <laughs> uh, That's very light compared to some of the belief system that this thing has. Everything is about getting closer to God. So this religion actually started with someone who goes by the name of Paul Twitchell, even though his first name's actually Jacob. We're going to get into that right now. Let's talk about it. I want to show you guys a website. We're going to browse it real quick. 
And uh, I'm going to explain to you how Harold Klemp has completely wiped any information about him on the internet and why I don't trust people that completely wipe all the information about them on the internet, even if they're coming on here to be a, a content creator. Why do you got to wipe everything? Are you running a cult? I don't know. What are you hiding? I don't know. It makes us wonder over here in this community. It makes us wonder. So this is Paul Twitchell. You can find some info on these people, but holy crap, do you ever have to dig? I swear to God, this place. <laughs> like, I do. It, Scientology did the same thing, by the way. Um, I mean, it's a little harder for them to keep up on all of the information that all of us anti-cultists keep pumping out into the world about what it actually is. But they used to pay to have their shit wiped. So that whenever you looked up like L. Ron Hubbard, it would be all these like amazing, great things about the idiot instead of what he actually is. They've kind of done that with this. And, and I noticed that a lot about these uh, cults is it's very hard to find real information about the people, no matter how deep you dig. It, it's like they really do go and wipe Internet history. And it is said that a lot of these people also lie later on about their lives to try to make themselves seem more important because, well, I guess if you're going to be some kind of prophet, <laughs> if you will, then you have to have a, an amazing life or something, right? So Paul Twitchell was actually born Jacob Paul Twitchell. And he was an American author and spiritual teacher. You're going to notice there seems to be a very big theme out here. <laughs> of authors, especially of science fiction, for some reason, creating cults. It's a running theme. Maybe we can't trust authors. Maybe all the authors out here are trying to all create cults. Who knows? That's a joke. I'm, don't go start canceling all the authors, please. So, as we know, this is a part of the new religious movement, which again, as I kind of brought up earlier, in the 1960s, when the hippie movement was going strong, a bunch of like religions popped up, right? They were like, we are the new religious movement. We are the liberal, the liberal religions. We are not at all like Roman Catholics or the likes. We are free. Free religion. And, that, and that's kind of what the new religious movement is. Unfortunately, we now have a new one happening in our world where everyone goes back to becoming pagan. Everyone goes back to cults right now. And they go, we are in a new religious movement. These essential oils cure cancer. I will drink jelly juice and then my insides will be all fixed. I am going to cast a spell and a hex on the people who don't like me. And I'm over here like, yo, we just learned nothing. We learned nothing from the 60s and 70s, guys. I don't know what's going on in our world today, but we are doing this again. So just know that we're in a new religious movement since then. That one happened. Now it's happening again where people are regressing because they don't like the government. And apparently we all need somebody to tell us how to be out here. So then we have to go to a religion to tell us how to be. So then new religious movements get formed. <laughs> Yay! Again, a lesson in sociology from, from Queen of Spade, because I apparently just go into rants about that. So again, he is the head of this. He literally created it. I want to just get into it. I don't want to go into, we don't care what university you went to. Okay, because let me tell you, again, not all of this information has really been, um, like, correct. Like, like I said, they are, like, jelly juice cures everything. Yes, jelly juice. We stand Jeff Holiday here, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, basically, like, they can't actually completely <laughs> ensure that he actually went to this university. Like, they... Like I said, there's been a lot of, like, these people wiping their backgrounds. But I am going to bring up that he's from Providence, Rhode Island. So we probably shouldn't trust him. Okay. I'll bring it up. Cult leaders from there. Cults of personalities from there. Don't trust them. And he married his wife there. And that was in 1942. 
<clears throat> it seems like after he married his wife, uh, we can follow him. It, it's so strange. So before he married his wife, it's hard to kind of like actually find real information about the dude and, and be like, yes, he for sure went to Murray State Teachers College. Like it, it he says this, it, other people have said this, but like I said, there's, we can't find it because he didn't get a damn degree from anywhere. Do you get what I'm saying? So like, I can't be like, yes, he for sure went here because it's just kind of like hearsay. And, and then people are like, okay, sounds good. But then once he marries his wife in 1942, then you can kind of start to, to follow him. And then there's a, a paper trail, if you will, of what he does. So I kind of want to start from there because like I said, I, I, I don't know if his childhood and all that stuff actually happened could all just be made up by the man. We don't know. A lot of these cult leaders like to make up their education. We've seen it with Ash Mufara. I do believe that he's a cult leader and he literally tells everyone that he has a master's in information technology, but he puts it as MIT and then tries to trick everyone into believing he went to MIT and that he's also gone to Harvard. And that's not true. A lot of these guys, like I said, lie about their education to make them seem more educated than they are because they figure that they won't get as many followers if they don't appear to be educated. And then you have like Charles Manson who just threw that all off. You know what I mean? But a lot of them do this. So he's actually someone that went around <laughs> and investigated all of the spiritual movement. So he was kind of like me and he was out here, he was studying them all. He was like, I'm going to study all the religions. I'm going to read all the occult books of some really great occult books. And I'm just going to get right into it. And then instead of being like, let's use this information to speak out. <laughs> he was like, I'm going to create some cults, right? As we often see. So in 1950, he joined the Swami Pramanada Girls' Self-Revelation Church of Absolute Monism. And I know you're like, well, it's not for girls. What's going on? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me, right? <laughs> he was just so great. They, they brought him on. And it was an offshoot of the Paramahansa Yogananda Self-Realization Fellowship, which just sounds like something very Mormon, if you ask me. He lived on the grounds of the church and edited his paradoxical, The Mystic Cross, which again, you're going to notice a lot of these guys are like writing these spiritual books and then they turn them into religion. I don't know why. It's like Ron Hubbard. He's like, let's talk about spaceships and shit. And then we're going to, you know, it's like, and then we'll make it into a religion. It's like, okay, sounds good. We'll just turn your sci-fi books and religion books into fucking an actual cult. Awesome. In July of 1955, he was arrested. <laughs> he was arrested following violent fights with others living in the Swami's compound. The Swami's group terminated its relationship with him. A few months later, his wife left him. They formally separated and she remained on the compound for a short time. And their divorce was finalized in 1960. So again, he got into a fight. Which is why I wanted to play the clip at the beginning of this of him talking to the kids about how he was the most sociopathic student at his school. Like, again, not really sure what he wanted to teach the kids with that. But as you see, it that apparently was a thing when he was younger, where he got into fights with the actual teachers and used to tell the teachers that they were wrong on what he was being taught. And he would get into fights with teachers. This guy has had an ego the size of his state since he was born. He like went to school and was like, I know more than all the teachers. And if they don't believe me, I'll just beat them up. It's like, are you okay, sir? Like, fuck. Someone go and give him a smack in the head and tell him that he, he doesn't know what he thinks he knows. Okay. You're just a kid. Stop this. But it carried on, apparently, all the way into his adult life where he literally just went around fighting everyone. And then got charged for it. It's really weird. He then was initiated into the Surat Shab Yoga by Kirpal Singh. 
We'll get into that person one day. Don't worry. Master of the Sant May, Matt Group, named, and I never get this fucking name wrong or right. I never get it wrong. No, I never get it right. And uh, I'm not going to butcher it today. And that was in October of 1955 in Washington, D.C. Again, don't trust people from there. Right, Joe? Right. He immediately became a devoted student of Singh, acknowledged experiences during initiation, initiation, you say? Hmm, that's interesting. And later on wrote to his master of his appearing in Twitchell's apartment and dictating discourses to him, which he would type up and mail to Singh in New Delhi, India. By 1966, reports to Singh that Twitchell was teaching a program very similar to the one that he runs caused a serious disagreement between them, which was never repaired. And even when uh, Twitchell died, just a few a few weeks before he died, apparently he had sent a letter to Singh and was all like, I never saw you as a master. I never got any initiation from you. You have no power. You're awful. I've always been better than you. I'm a better spiritual master. Meh, 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 meh. Uh, that was apparently a thing, and Singh claimed that as well. In December 1963, he asked Singh to allow him to dedicate a book, The Tiger's Fay, in his name. This book is still published to this day. You can go pick it up. You want to do a good book review with me? Go pick up The Tiger's Fay. You can review that, and I'll review Ekankar Ancient Wisdom for today, and we'll have a great time. In Singh's name, again, they put it in his name. Twitchell wanted his help to get it published and sent him the manuscript. But he never received a positive response from the dude. And again, at their disagreement, he was like, send that shit back to me. I don't trust you. And then he actually went and published it himself in 1967, which is amazing. It's so great that our world has created... <laughs> a place where people can just go publish things themselves. I, I, I mean, they could just be like, you know what? I think I want to write a Bible for a cult and, and then just go publish it. You can just pay money. I could write a book today and just on every single page, I could put fuck you and, and then go and publish it and, and pass it around and be like, I am a published author. And that causes us a lot of dangers, but we won't get into that because then I'm going to get canceled for saying that I don't like the self-publishing industry. <laughs> anyway, Twitchell's first known connection with L. Ron Hubbard. And then you're like, wait a minute, what? I know, I know. I, I They were connected. Twitchell joined Scientology because here's the thing. They were both authors. They kind of became friends when Dianetics was being written and everything, right? So if you guys went and you watch my pseudoscience and cult Scientology video, if you guys don't yet watch John Atack, Family and Friends, please go and watch it. Him and Spike were both in Scientology, like in cults. They talk a lot about it and about L. Ron Hubbard. They go into the whole thing. If you ever want to know more information, go watch my video, watch them. They get into all of this. But he was an author, also sci-fi, decided to do Dianetics, and then that's kind of how Scientology became Scientology. So right around the time he's doing that, Twitchell is now friends with him. Scientology is, is now, like, being formed, right? So it, it just kind of started. It's just been going for a little while, right? And then this guy joins it. And he was in it from 1956 to 1959. He even became a member of the church's staff. And not only that, but he actually worked his way all the way up to being literally the top. And you guys know how hard it is. Well, a lot of my viewers know how hard it is to work your way up in the Scientology and end up actually like one of the fucking top people in there. So, um, basically, <laughs> Twitchell worked his whole way up Scientology 
became the top hun, if you will, taught it to other people, and then went and started his own religion, you know, kind of like doTERRA in Young Living, if you will. That same sort of thing, you know, you work your way up in a religion, become the top of it, and then you go, well, there's nowhere else for me to go. I can't manipulate anyone else here. So I'm going to go create my own, and then I'll manipulate all the people I want, and they'll all worship me. And then I don't have to pay taxes. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's actually why Scientology was created. The dude just didn't want to pay taxes. Want to have Anyway, go watch my video on that. He then moved to Seattle, Washington in late 1960 after his sister died. And then he got into knowing Gail Ann Atkinson in 1962. They ended up becoming like married and whatnot. And she was also in initiated by Singh. So it seems like they went from Singh to Hubbard. And then they were like, let's go create our own. I know what we can do. We can do it ourselves. Rumor has it that uh, it was actually his wife that was like, listen, I think it would be really good. If we created our own little cult here, they married in 1964 and he really became a writer. Twitchell was like, I really want to be a writer. That's what I want to do. And all of a sudden he began writing articles about Akinkar. And they started getting published in newspapers and magazines at first, this was just kind of like a, a spiritual soul travel, if, if you will. It talked a little bit about reincarnation and how, like, some of their beliefs about the soul and how you need to get your soul closer to God and whatnot. But it, it wasn't really a cult, if you will, until 1965. That's when they actually founded the Ekinkar Corporation and the Illuminated Way Press. And both are in California, as a lot of the cults are. I always joke that if it's not from Utah, right, then it's got to be from Florida, okay? <laughs> so then... Uh, well, well, here, like it says, it was his second wife who suggested that he adapt some of his spiritual education into the religion. So he was just kind of like trying to do spiritual teachings, if you will, through his writing. He hadn't quite reached the I'm going to become a cult leader part yet. And then his lovely wife was like, we should actually just create a whole corporation with this. And then we can teach everybody and you can be the master ek, and it will be wonderful. And then we don't have to you know, any taxes. It'll be great. It'll be so awesome. Let's do it. And they were like, okay, let's do it. And that's basically what happened. It was launched in October of 1965. And he always referred to it as an ancient teaching. He, like I said, at the start, wasn't really doing like a cult, if you will. To him, it was almost more like Nexium. Although at the end, instead of you just being closer to Keith Raniere, you were closer to God, okay? Like that's kind of what it was. It was a spiritual teaching where you would come, you would take courses and then learn about the spiritual world and how you could get closer to God and that kind of thing. And then it slowly kind of turned into a cult because he started to publish all kinds of books and personal study discourses. He started to give talks around the world, including to children. And like, he, he had this sense of humor. There was this man who, the man who talks to God, and it was in a series. And he used to, like, poke fun of it and poke fun of himself. So he was kind of like a cult leader that was like, fuck these cult leaders. 
right? But he actually did think that he talked to God. He started telling people, I can communicate with God. If you write me a letter and you need some advice from God and you say like, hey, Paul, Mr. Twitchell, sir, I'm having relationship issues, let's say. Can you please ask God to uh, tell me how to solve them? And then this man would actually be like, yes. Yes, I have spoken to God. God told me that you must bow to your husband and do everything that your husband says. And then your relationship issues will be fixed. Like that kind of thing. And it was like really creepy, if anything. And the funny thing about it, you may have seen some memes on this because he is the I have spoken man. So at the end of all these speeches that he used to give, he would literally scream that. I have spoken. If he wrote a letter and then told you how God wanted you to fix your relationship at the end of the letter, it ended in I have spoken. And so I feel like that's kind of where he started to to think he was some kind of prophet right and it's interesting to watch kind of them lose their minds throughout this you can sort of see where it starts to go wrong you know and the other thing about a lot of these cults that they always do is an us versus them mentality and the cults that began in the 60s and 70s and whatnot like around the hippie movement it was very easy for them to pull on that because I was kind of like the rebellion rebellion time in society. Right. So there was a lot of us versus them, you know, the Vietnam war happened. Um, and there was a lot of people that were against the war and a lot of people felt like it was them against the government, the war, that kind of thing. So it was very easy for people like this man, <coughs> Charles Manson, etc. To kind of come in there and be like, listen, I have a place for you to go. I have a place where you'll be accepted. And I even have a place that will teach you how to be the best version of yourself. And it is not like any of these other things. It's not the government. It's not like the other religions. This is a new age thing. It's brand new. It's beautiful. Let's do it. And that's kind of what happened with a lot of these calls. And that's how people kind of fell into it. It was very easy for them to make anyone outside of their call look evil. Oh, they must be okay with the Vietnam War. They want everyone to die. But if you come join our cult, we're against the war. We're going to put flowers in the guns. That kind of thing, okay? They would use that. Now we get into Harold a little bit, which we just love talking about Harold Klemp. Harold Klemp is the bane of my existence. No. Beth, you have been canceled so many times. One more hard. <laughs> I get canceled every day. I thought they would be related to Eckhart Tolle so from the name. He has a cult full of, like following. <laughs> they check that out. I like hearing things about that. But I had never heard of this cult. That's cool and scary. Yeah, no, this one is really, really scary, isn't it? I know it's really scary because it's still going on, and I just joined it. Help. So in 1984 is is when Harold Klemp kind of like found the Twitchell, I guess. Well, at least we can see that that's where they've made their first connection, if you will. Because he commented on Twitchell as a writer. He was an avid letter writer and he always kept a carbon copy. At one time, Paul made his living by writing for pulp magazines. He also wrote pulp public relations copy for the Navy. Sorry, I didn't write any pulp anything for the Navy. I can assure you that. He sincerely cared about spiritual unfoldment and growth. He went through volumes of books on consciousness, a subject which was not in vogue in those days, which is how this man was able to create this cult. He thrived on the study of different philosophies, which again makes him look open-minded. So then a lot of people don't think that he's going to be a cult leader because he's just studying all the different ancient philosophies. What do you mean? He also described Twitchell as a master compiler. The high teachings of Eck 
had been scattered to the four corners of the world. The different masters each had parts and pieces of it, but they attached little requirements. You must be a vegetarian, or you have to meditate so many hours a day. Paul gathered up the whole teaching and took the best. Like I said, he pulled from everywhere, this man. Though it may be strange to say, in this sense I see him as a master compiler. He gathered the golden teachings that were scattered around the world and made them readily available to us. So again, this man literally went around and was like, what are the best parts of the religion that I think could be the best parts of the religion? And then we're going to take that and we're going to add it to our religion. And then everyone will follow us instead because they don't want to have to become a vegetarian or not eat fish on Sundays or have to meditate so many hours a day. And we're going to be the free spirit religion. If you ever see people trying to claim that they're going to be some kind of like free spirited religion that doesn't have rules like anywhere else, don't join that one either. <laughs> That's also a cult. They are using that against you. Just like when an MLM hun tells you that their MLM is different than all the other MLMs. Okay? The, all the commercial cults are the same. All of these new age movements are all cults. Stop the madness. Stop the madness. I'm trying to save you all from the cults. And then you just get mad at me talking about the cults. So I just want to take a minute. I want to play the, the song of, of who again. I want you guys to take a bit. I want you to listen to it. Meditate during it, if you will. Tell me what you think of this. Tell me if this song makes you want to get closer to God. Because I honestly do find this to be hilarious. That this is the song that they call a love song to God. And we love the songs here. I know I already played it. But there's some new people here. Maybe they haven't heard it. And like I said, this is the end all of all songs. Whenever they are telling someone any advice, it's this song that they're supposed to listen to. This is like their meditation song. It is the song that you're supposed to make love to. It is the song that you should bathe your kids with. It is the song that you should be singing while you're making dinner. Cults always have fucking songs. <laughs> Which is why I do awful songs, if you didn't know. So I just want you, now that you know like a little bit about this, watch this. And just tell me if, if this seems like the new age movement song cult that you would want to join. I really do want to hear from you on it. Does it remind you of a mixture of like an on passive song and a cult song? That That's what I really want to know. I won't play the whole thing on you guys again. That's basically like the beginning, the uh, quarter of the song, if you will. This is creepy. Okay. I get, did you guys watch my uh, video on Allison Mack? If you haven't, the beginning of that video, I play her doing a talent show, if you will. And she sings a song to Keith 
Rhaenyra. And she's like crying in it. It's a big thing. It's like made people very uncomfortable when I showed them it. They were like, why did you show us that? That was like really scary. And I was like, because you have to understand <clears throat> how like into this they get. This is like if you were to take that and then mix it with an unpassive song. And then you get this song. Is it just me? I, I feel like that. Because they do the whole, like, eyes closed singing thing, which you'll see also in, like, Christian churches. I remember going to one when I was a kid with a friend of mine, and her mom had, like, her eyes closed and her hand up, and she was, like, singing. And I thought we were supposed to be doing that because I, I went to Catholic church where when people stand up, you stand up, and then you're supposed to kneel, and then you're supposed to, you know, like, there's, there's things you're supposed to be doing. So I was like, oh, my God, I was, like, nine years old. And I was like, I don't think I'm supposed to be singing with my arm up. So I literally, as a nine-year-old, like, put my arm up and closed my eyes and started singing because her mom was. And I was just trying to, like, do what everyone else in the room was doing. Yeah, things like that, okay? It makes me think of that. And I'm like, that's really creepy. That's some indoctrinating shit. You're closing your eyes. You're praising the Lord. I just, I get a little scared, okay? I get a little scared. A little scared. But yes, Joe says the lady on the right could be Susie. <laughs> she really could. I mean, and that's the thing is that they get that into it. But it's not the type of song that I was expecting. Like I said, it has some hymnies in it. You know, we got some harmonies and whatnot. But it was really surprising to me because in comparison to the other cult songs, I was like, this isn't really all that culty. So now when you think of the songs like this, and then you think of the time that this was created. And like Joe brought up at the beginning, it sounds like a folk hymn. And then you can kind of get how people would maybe hear this music and go, huh, yeah, no, this, this looks like a new age movement, very free. And we just sing this song and have a grand old time. And then you can kind of see how people that maybe we're doing the whole free love thing and all that at that time could have kind of fallen into this the same with like the Manson cult and how he used to play music. Music is used a lot, a lot to manipulate you into groups. It really is. Half the singers out here are in Scientology. Half of Hollywood is in Scientology actually. And they're all trying to get you into Scientology. So, I want to show you the website because, oh my goodness, the first thing that I did after I responded to an email and I was like, yes, please send me all the free, free books on this thing. I will definitely take them and I will join your cult. Then they asked for my information and I don't hide anything. Even when I troll the Huns, I'm not like these other people out here who like make a fake account. I'll be like, hi. It's me, Beth Gibbons, Queen of Spade. What's up? <laughs> like, I don't care. So I was like, here's my phone number. <clears throat> and I was an idiot. And I gave them my husband's number because I don't have a working phone right now to use. And our number doesn't call like out of the state. So I had to join the Canadian one and uh, gave them the number. They've been calling my husband nonstop. <laughs> he literally, I forgot to tell him what I was doing. This is kind of funny. Forgot to tell him what I was doing. So he started getting all these phone calls and he was like, are you like trying to find God? Like what's going on? What are you doing? <laughs> I know you didn't become religious. Okay. I know that about you. What bullshit are you trying to pull with this cult right now? <laughs> Why are these people calling me? And I was like, I know, I know. I, we got to have a conversation with them. <clears throat> I, I had a text now account one time to talk to one person and then it horrified me because he's a stalker and I will never have one ever again. <laughs> True story. Thank Chris for that. Um, so I want to look at this website because then the next thing I did after my husband was all like, what are you doing? I was like, come look at this. <laughs> this is their website. Uh, we've joined a cult. I'm going to be researching it. We'll, we'll get a hold of them. Don't worry. Um, but they have a very, very strong presence in Toronto 
and they have a very strong presence here in Ottawa. So I was like, okay, we have to go check this out. Now the Canadian site is shit. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. I went to the Canadian site and I was like, there's there's not enough here. I'm sure I could do a video in future, like just for Canadians about the Canadian site. But if you really want the meat of the cult, you've got to go to the .org site. So without further ado, let me show you the wonderful uh, Ekinar, Ekinar website. Let's do it. This is it. This is the website. Experience the most sacred part of yourself. And remember I told you the soul is everything. You are soul, an eternal created being, unlimited, divine. Does something inside you long to know life's purpose? To make sense of the world around you? I can assure you all that I am atheist. And I am apparently so autistic that I have to make everything in this world make sense to me. And I have to know everything about everything in the world around me. And I can make sense of the world around me without a cult. I'm just bringing that up. You, you, you don't need a cult. You don't need religion. You don't need anything other than yourself and your brain and the ability to research in order to make sense of the world around you. I really wish that people would stop telling people that they are too dumb <laughs> and that they can't just go and figure things out for themselves and that they need to look up to some spiritual being or some government or something to tell them how to do it. Trust me when I say you are more than intelligent enough to figure it out without any of this. I believe in you. Maybe they don't, but I do. Akinkar is an active, individual, <laughs> that's why it's a cult, right? <laughs> Creative spiritual practice, which is why they have like conferences and teach courses. Mm -hmm. A companion and roadmap for your journey home. To the heights of self-discovery and God-discovery and beyond. To infinity and beyond! You knew I was going to. Come on. Come along and discover the most secret part of yourself. The key to spiritual freedom lies within you. I was like, well, now this is sounding kind of sexy. Ooh, the most secret part of myself. Okay. We're going to be discovering. I already found my G-spot. So what else is there? You know, <clears throat> that kind of thing. But it's not sexy. There's nothing sexy about this at all. <laughs> Even Harold Klemp, not a good looking man. <laughs> okay. The hero's journey of advanced spiritual living. And look at this guy. He's standing on a hill. He's like, God has made it so that I don't want to jump. <laughs> Have you ever felt a hunger for something you can't even put words to? Can I just point out that everyone has? <laughs> like, all of us have wanted something that we can't put words to. All of us have wanted something that we don't have. All of us want to figure out the world and why we're here. All of us want to know the world around us. This shit is so general. It just talks to everyone. And that it drives me insane. That, that shit drives me insane. This is why I talk about this. Because things like this drive me insane. Okay? I'm like, listen. Fuck off. <laughs> That's everybody. Yes, everyone has. Congratulations. Don't need a cult to do it. Thank you. What if... Well, now we're doing what ifs with the cult. Yes, because my spiritual journey is full of what ifs, right? What if you are actually on a journey? A quest? That has spanned the ages, continents, lifetimes. It has survived victories, tragedies, wealth and poverty, unimaginable gains and losses, death and rebirth, time and again. The journey is worth everything because you are the hero and your saga continues until the quest is fulfilled. Oh, damn it. We got a bunch of trolls that all have hero complex, and now they're all gonna go join this cult. Damn it! Trust me, you're not a hero. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry to break it to you. 
You're just a normal person on the world. This is the only life you get. Live it well. Then we get into, and this is why I want to play this again, because I'm sure some of you are like, let me play the song again for a queen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is why. Photoshop, the earth was... <laughs> CC's going to get mad at me. I think he unsubscribed. He was like, oh, never mind. She's she's not a fan. I think he thought I was a fan and a flat earther. So he like subscribed to me. And then he, I think he watched some of my videos and then he was out of there. He was like, I don't know. No. It looks like the standard stuff. Yeah, they all do. Don't they all? Like, I feel like all of these websites from MLMs to cults. Okay. All of them use like the fucking worst stock photos and they're bad ones too. Like, I'm like, anyone can get this stock photo. Like you didn't even try. Okay. We all have Canva. Come on now. Come on. So the sound of soul, right? Now, remember, I played the song for you. You heard the whole song. You heard it again just a few moments ago, a little piece of it. Like I said, this is the song of all songs. It's the sound of cell. A divine sound courses through all life, through every blade of grass, every galaxy, every atom of our bodies. Who is an ancient sacred name for God, a carrier of love between soul and God. Remember your soul? I'm just, you know. When sung or chanted with an open heart, it opens the lines of communication to the most sacred part of yourself. Now, I don't know about you, but I heard the whole song at the beginning of this. We just listened to a little bit more no lines of communication were opened for me other than me wanting to sit here and scream out into the world not to join this cult. <laughs> That's the only line of communication that opened, okay? The most sacred part of myself is is bringing out Stephen Hassan's bite model. <laughs> and I'm checking everything off like, this is not good. This is not good. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have listened to the sound of soul. It apparently had the opposite effect on me than what they were going for. Uh, anyway, who acts as a tuning fork? Because they were so in tune, weren't they? Aligning soul with higher states of love, creativity, healing, and awareness. Is everyone feeling more aware and healed? And loved and creative since listening to who? Me either. It is the clear voice of God. With the power to transform the lead of human consciousness into the gold of an enlightened soul. Find your own proof of the love and power of who? <coughs> excuse me and then they actually like leave us experience the sound of soul and when you click on that it goes to the video that i just played for you it's beautiful now we have our spiritual teacher and guide now remember it used to be good old paul now it's harold clemp and there was someone in between them but not as interesting i won't lie he's kind of boring compared to these two so i'd like to focus on the dude that created this and then the one that is in their lovely spiritual teacher and guide today. Still to this day, this man is running this cult. Spiritual teachers from an ancient lineage walk among us today. I'd really like to know what this man's ancient lineage is. He was born in the U.S. I'm just like, there isn't much of one. Anyway. Adepts who have mastered the spiritual laws of life, embodying them in thought, word, and deed. Teachers of the highest order. And remember, the man that created this used to get into fist fights with his teachers, apparently. So that's probably where that comes from. These are the Ekmasters! Chief among them is the Mahanta. The living Ekmaster, as an inner and outer, 
spiritual teacher. His role is to awaken the God knowledge already within you. Already within you. Yay. Then we have this. This. As soul, you have the God knowledge within you. My main job is to awaken that knowledge and that love for the divine things that are already in your heart. You are soul. You are a child of God and your spiritual destiny is to become a co-worker with God and to spread divine love to all those around you. And to, to spread <laughs> Mr. Rogers. <laughs> you know what? He actually kind of does look like Mr. Rogers. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. We are all running a cult awakening. So I don't know. I tried, okay? But yeah, so um, the funny thing, again, ab about a lot of these cults, as I keep pointing out, is I have no clue why the fuck people want to follow this dude. <laughs> I really don't. Like Joe just brought up, he kind of looks like Mr. Rogers. He isn't that well-spoken. Again, at the intro, I showed you, he's, he's not the greatest well-spoken man that I've ever seen. <laughs> Sorry, you would think that when these guys pick a cult leader, that they would want someone that speaks really well and is someone that, like, when you look at him, you think, oh, my God. And for some reason, like, people said that about Keith Raniere. Like, they would look at him and they would get, like, this feeling that he was, like, powerful or something. And I, I never did. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I am dead inside. Me and my atheist non-soul were just dead. And, and then I don't get excited at, at cult leaders or something. But again, I'm been kind of racking my brain this whole time trying to figure out what it is about Harold Klemp and all I can find about Harold Klemp is that he just became the Eck master then as you see we get to advanced spiritual living courses do you have to pay for them yes uh huh mm -hmm. of course you do why would it be free? Why would your journey closer to God be free? They're not actually doing this so that you actually get closer to God, morons. They're doing this to run a cult and make money and not pay taxes, damn it. So of course you have to pay for courses. Why wouldn't you? Just like with Nexium or Scientology. You need to do courses and pay a lot of money and buy lots of books and CDs and songs and whatnot to get closer to God. And if you don't buy all the stuff, then you won't be closer to God. Advanced spiritual living courses. A true spiritual teaching strengthens the link between God and you. And it provides a God to help make your individual journey as direct as possible. Where are we going? To heaven, apparently. Then we have the e-booklet series. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yep. X Soul Adventure Booklet. Mm-hmm. Looking for a burst of spiritual sunshine for secrets of surviving and thriving in these times? <laughs> this was, by the way, posted during COVID. I'm just going to point that out. Each dynamic e-booklet in this series offers a quick tour of a key facet of spiritual living. Explore amazing stories, insights, questions, and answers in an inspiring spiritual exercise you can try today. These short, mobile-friendly PDFs cover a wide range of spiritual interests and needs, a delight to the eye, and uplifting to every heart. And apparently nobody likes my Valley Girl voice, and they don't understand that when I'm doing the Valley Girl voice, you're not supposed to like it. You're not supposed to be like, oh my god, I love it when Queen does a Valley Girl voice. That's the point. We use it to make fun of people. Damn it. So then it says explore next steps. Because again, this isn't just like a religion that you join. This isn't like a Catholic or Christian religion. Which, by the way, those ones, like, yes, they have cults in them. 
But I do feel like a lot of Christian religions, like they really don't ask you for much. Like you, you join it, you go to church every Saturday or Sunday, you sing some songs, you believe in God, you go home. Okay. Nothing is wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with having a belief in God. And there is nothing wrong with having these beliefs. Okay. Whether you're pagan, Christian, Mormon, you can have your belief system. It becomes wrong when the belief system is then used to prey on you. It becomes wrong when the belief system actually tries to take over and control your life or your finances or etc. That is when you have reached over into extremism and then you are possibly in a cult. I really need people to understand that. I am not out here as a bigot going, do not believe in anything, be atheist. <laughs> That's not what I'm doing. I am just trying to show you that a lot of these religions, especially in the New Age movement ones, by the way, are cults. And they want you to be extremists. For some reason, too, in 2022, everybody wants you to be an extremist. All right, I don't know what happened in 2016, but just ever since then, you're supposed to be an extremist with everything. So be weary of that. I just want you to be warned. And if they ask you to do courses like this, even if something's free, like get your free book like I did. I, I applied and got my, my free book. The next is to find events near me. And trust me, I'm going to find out a way to go to these events and record them. We're, we're going to have some fun. And then we have transform through daily practice. This whole thing depends on you paying money, like I said, to move up a system, just like an MLM company, to get closer to God. Now we come, become an ex-student. Advanced spiritual living courses, seminars, podcasts, magazine, e-booklets, daily inspiration, develop a daily practice. Everything... It just keeps you engaged constantly with the cult, right? Always have to be engaged. Always have to be doing something for the cult. If you're, if you're not listening to seminars and podcasts and whatnot, make sure that you're reading the magazine or going through the e-booklets. Make sure you're doing everything daily. Make sure you have a daily practice. Make sure you're listening to the song of who whenever you do everything you do. Right? free who download. They even have a blog. They have a parent's blog and they have an animal's blog. And don't you worry, we are going to be deep diving those in future because it is horrifying to me, especially the parents one, especially after you just heard how Paul talks to children about how it, they should beat up their teachers and shit. I don't know what that was about, okay? It was very, very, very freaky. Now, where I want to get into is this members area, and I'm working on that right now. That is why I joined. If you're wondering, <coughs> excuse me, I didn't just join for the free book. I also joined because we want to know what the hell the members are up to in this thing. It horrifies me whenever they have a secret area. You know, I do not like secret areas on the net from places like this. I go, what do you need to all be doing in secret? Kind of indoctrinating shits going on in there that you cannot share with the rest of us. Right? Scary thought. So, you come here, got home, we just went through. Explore. That doesn't lead you anywhere. Experience hardly leads you anywhere. It's all the same shit. All the same shit. I promise. It's almost scary how much of the same shit it is. But one of the main things I would like to talk about right now is I would like to show you guys the Temple of Ek, which is an interesting part of their website. Like I said, we're just doing kind of a, a long, short introduction since this is almost two hours long because I can talk for days. But I do want to show you because this is kind of like, I guess, their heaven, <laughs> if you will. It's, it's hard to explain it all. We're going to get into it. Don't worry. So um, here we have, we are moving into a golden age of spirituality. As we enter the 21st century, a creative fountain is being opened 
and many more people will be able to manifest that which is of the higher worlds. Often, the preparation or training for this creative flow takes place in the temples of golden wisdom. <coughs> Harold Klemp, Eck, Wisdom Temples, Spiritual Cities and Guides, A Brief History, because we need him to give us that. A Dream Sketchbook. So they actually have the Temple of Eck, and it is in Chanhassen, Minnesota. Literally, you can go there and you can go worship, if you will. I don't know how else to put it. But it it it, it looks a lot like a, a Buddhist temple, if you will. This is kind of a picture of it, I guess. And it, it horrifies me. Okay, these people are about to build a compound. We need to stop them. I don't know what they're up to. But that just horrifies me. Whenever I see that they have a temple, I'm like, oh no, they actually have a building. Yay, Scientology had a bunch of them. And then when people went inside, they were never allowed to leave. <laughs> we can't have this. This isn't good. So that horrifies me just a little bit. And then I'm trying to research who Harold Klemp is. The furries photos. I'll bring those. I'll be a furry. But like I say, you can't be a bear furry. Because... All right, Alex is already the bear furry of all bear furries. So you, you got to pick a different one, Joe. Okay, you got to pick a different animal. But when you're looking up, um, is that the castle from Frozen? <laughs> it might as well be, dude. I mean, it really does look like the Disney castle, doesn't it? It kind of looks like the one from like uh, the Little Mermaid there. Whenever you're looking up Harold Clump, I just need to show you, like, you can't find much information on this man at all. He has literally, like, wiped the history of the internet. So all you can find is things like this. American writer, Harold Clump. He really wants to be seen as an American writer, not an American cult leader. So can we all change that? We need to make it so that this man is known as the American cult leader of Ekinkar, <laughs> not American writer. He was born in 1942. And then we have here that it is a nonprofit religious group with members in over 100 countries. What does that sound like? <laughs> the spiritual home is the Temple of Ek in Chanhassen, Minnesota, and it's not affiliated with any other religious group. And then they're like, listen, it's we just teach simple spiritual exercises, okay? That's all we do. We just sing who, <laughs> and it's a love song to God, and it's just a spiritual exercise. And then we have you sign over your entire life, because <laughs> that's what happens in these things. And then it just gets into this, all right? Apparently, he attended a Lutheran ministerial high school and college. He later pursued private study in different paths, such as Ruskurians and Edgar Case. The extent of the influence of these teachings on Clamp is difficult to determine. See, because it's literally fucking possible to find any information on this man. One of the basic tenets is that soul, the true self, may be experienced separate from the physical body and in full consciousness travel freely in other planes of reality. Ekinkar emphasizes personal spiritual experiences as the most natural way back to God. These are attained via soul travel shifting the awareness from the body to the inner planes of existence. And certain mantras or chants are used to facilitate this spiritual growth. As I keep saying, who is the main one. They sing it alone or in groups. They believe that singing who draws one closer in a state of consciousness to the divine being and that it can expand awareness, help one experience divine love, heal broken hearts, offer solace in times of grief, and bring peace and calm. Like I said, this song can apparently do everything for everyone. Ekists, which is apparently what they like to be called. Like, imagine being like, I'm an Ekist. 
It's really fun to say. Seriously, sit there and go, heck, heck, it's kind of fun. But they believe, I don't know what just happened. That was crazy. I guess believe this practice allows the student to step back from the overwhelming input of the physical senses and emotions and it regains soul spiritually higher viewpoint. In other words, they have it so that you don't listen to your intuition and you don't listen to your body giving you warning signs and you don't listen to red flags. And then you just follow these people and whatever they say to do in order to reach pure spirituality and be close to God. That's, and I'm just going to translate it for you in non-cult way of speaking. Dreams are regarded as important teaching tools, and members often keep dream journals to facilitate study. According to followers of Ekinkar, dream travel often serves as the gateway to soul travel or the shifting of one's consciousness to ever higher states of being. You will notice that right now in our world, there are a lot of people. A lot of people that are talking about how they can do this soul traveling. Talking about how they can do like shape shifting in their dreams. Talking about how they can go and visit Hogwarts. Where does that come from? It comes from this. It comes from this cult. We are having a lot of our youth right now joining this cult. Signing up for the doctrines of this cult thinking that it is okay that they can soul travel to different dimensions. If you have been watching TikTok and wondering what all that's about, I bring to you Harold Klemp and the cult that causes it. You're welcome. I hate me too for it. I'm sorry. Egan Carr teaches that spiritual liberation in one's lifetime is available to all, and that is a possible it is possible to achieve self-realization. That is the realization of oneself as soul, by the way. It, it's hilarious to me because they talk about, when you think of self-realization, right? You would think that that would be like getting to know yourself. You know, being transparent with yourself, not lying to yourself, owning up to your flaws and your mistakes, that kind of thing, right? But no, they just mean that you need to see yourself as soul. Yeah, no, they don't care about any of that other shit. They just mean that you need to understand that you are soul. Because your self-realization just depends on that. Who cares about anything to do with you in your life? Just realize your soul, okay? And God realization, which is the realization of oneself as a spark of God. Which, again, you would think that that would be getting to know God more. See, in the Christian religion, it's a lot about having a relationship with God where they'll pray and they will think of God as a friend of theirs. And they'll be like, hey, God, what's up? I'm uh, hanging out here today. I'm sorry. I worked at a Christian church camp. So I'm pulling from the religions that I was a part of. <coughs> and um, literally all of high school worked at a Christian church camp. Will you believe that? Probably not. But it's a true story. And you would think that God realization would have something to do with that, right? Like praying, getting a relationship with God. That's usually what it means, but not in this religion. In this cult, it means that you have to realize that you are as a spark of God. It, totally different. The membership card for Ekinkar states. Now, the membership card is something I want to get into. Because, yes, you have to pay a membership fee, of course, to be in this religion. And I always tell people to be very careful of anything that asks them for a membership fee. Like this. Because that's creepy. The aim and purpose of Ekinkar has always been to take soul by its own path back to its divine source. And yes, the I is capitalized because soul is capitalized just like God is capitalized. Very important words these are. 
The final spiritual goal of all Ekis is to become conscious co-workers with God. And it gets into all of it. Which we're not going to get into all of it right now. But Ekmasters believe contact with the divine spirit, which they call the Ek. Like I said, Ek is their word for God, if you will. It's it's so funny to me because this religion talks about God as God. And then it talks about Ek, the divine spirit. And, and it's kind of like, listen, guys, if you wanted to give God a different name, that's fine. But can you, like, stick with calling it Ek then throughout the whole fucking thing? Going back and forth from Ek to God all the time is very, very annoying. How am I doing God realization to get closer to Ek? You know what I mean? Call it Ek realization, for fuck's sakes. Is, is that just me? Like, I, it drives me insane. But that's what these cults do. And it almost is to fuck with your head. Okay, so you don't really realize the manipulation and the indoctrination that's going on. But unfortunately, my head is unfuckwithable. So I always end up seeing that shit right away and going, the fuck is this? Why are you doing this? Ah! So I just had to bring that up because I'm also going to be venting a bit in this, but how insane it is. So, uh, yeah. It can be made via the spiritual exercises of Ek and the guidance of the living Ek Master. Yeah, not Paul the Dead Dude anymore, by the way. No, no, no. Harold Klepp now, the alive one. And the Ekinkar website has a list of masters. So again, just like in Scientology and Mormonism and a lot of the other cults we discuss on this channel, like I said, there are masters. There's only one Ek Master of all masters. And right now that's Harold Klepp. But right underneath him are, of course, a bunch of other masters listed on their website. Ottawa here has a master. Toronto has a master. I'm sure there's masters all over this, the fucking U.S., okay? And they're uh, the, basically the people that speak for the Ek Master, right? And keep you in line on behalf of him. Because he's really busy talking to God all the time. And then writing letters. Giving everyone advice. And doing these seminars and shit. So he can't guide you at all times. So he has to have other masters guide you. Right? And that's kind of what happens. And then you get very, very indoctrinated into this cult. And this is kind of a way that these cults. Use this to say, look, I'm not a cult. I'm not a cult leader. I'm not all-knowing because, look, I have other masters underneath me. They're the ones that are also running this. It's like MLMs, how they say, oh, no, this isn't, I'm the CEO of the company, but this is also about all you guys. You guys are going to reach the top and be CEOs and make money. So, see, we're not a cult. It's not all about us. It's about you. It's the same sort of thing where they're like, oh yeah, these are our top people. Just listen to everything they say. It's for all of you. Don't worry. Really bothersome. But again, I just want to bring up, this is peoplepill.com. And I don't use sites like this for research purposes, but trying to find information on Harold Clem is fucking impossible. It's very hard. It really is. So that's about all I have for that because it's it's impossible. I'm going to have to go buy some, some biographies and whatnot. So in order to really find out about this thing, other than me studying it in future and going through it and yada, yada, yada. And for <clears throat> the purpose sake of me, apparently, you can't trust anything I say on here, okay? I'm a very bad and worrisome person. You should all be very beware of me. Warning people of cults and telling people how to not get manipulated by them is very worrisome on YouTube. We need to stop everyone who's doing that type of content, okay? And listen to the pagans. But for uh, transparency's sake, because apparently I can't just sit here and read you guys the book and go through it. And then talk about how crazy it is because we can't believe anything I say as such a dangerous creator on here. 
we'll use some Wikipedia. So again, Ekin Carr, a new religious movement, which again, horrifies me every time I read that, by Paul Twitchell in 1965. And again, it's all just spiritual exercises, guys. All spiritual exercises. So again, the leader of the Ekin Carr is known as the Living Ek Master. He claims that only a man can do this. So yes, it's of course very, very uh, sexist, as all cults are. This is the Temple of Ek here. This is what it looks like, Temple of Ek. All right, it's a beautiful, beautiful picture, isn't it? Temple of Ek. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. This is what it looks like. If you're in Minnesota and you see this building and you see people going in and out of it, stay very, very far away. If you ever see this symbol here with an E and a K, I mean, it's supposed to be like an E-C-K, but let's be real. It just looks like an E-K, which also spells ek. Um, then stay far away. Stay far away from all of it. It is a cult. And uh, basically, it can only be a man that runs this thing, because why would a woman ever be smart enough to run a fucking cult, okay? They call them the Mahanta, and that refers to the inner aspect of the teacher. During Mr. Gross's 10-year leadership, and he was the guy in between these two, he was from 1971 to 1981, the corporation claimed he was the Manhattan. And now the leader functions as both an inner and outer guide for each member's individual spiritual progress. So now, of course, it is our friend Harold Klemp. Between 1981 and 1987, though, both Gross and Klemp were both saying that they were the living Eggmaster. So they had a little bit of a crossover. And then Mr. Gross died. Darwin Gross. He just died. Um, and then all of a sudden, Harold Klemp was... The wonderful Ek Master, if you will. We already went through some of the, the teachings. There are a few personal requirements to be an Ekist. This is what I want to get into before we wrap up this intro, because we need to talk about this. However, certain spiritual practices are recommended. Chief among these is daily practice of the spiritual exercises of Ek for 15 to 20 minutes. So every day they have to do this for 15 to 20 minutes. A lot like when the MLM Huns tell you to wake up and every day do 15 to 20 minutes of personal development. The most basic Ek spiritual exercise is singing the syllable who. Who. Yeah, literally, you're supposed to do that for like 15, 20 minutes if you're not listening to the song. I'm just saying. A wide variety of spiritual exercises are offered, and members are encouraged to create their own. <coughs> Again, not really sure how members can create their own. Right? Well, you have to think about it. So this is supposed to be a religion that gets you closer to God. They claim that you have to have an Ek master tell you every single thing to do and how to do that. But then they're like, oh, but the spiritual exercise, like anyone can make them. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? Like, this makes no sense. Okay. <laughs> if we have an Ek master and there's a certain way to do something and get closer to God, then not all of the members should be encouraged to create their own fucking ways. Okay. This is madness. Pure madness. Study of Ek books and written discourses alone or in groups is also encouraged. They would prefer if you did it in groups because then you get indoctrinated more. There are no dietary requirements to boost or enforce aesthetic practices. And they do not require potential members 
to leave their current faith to join. Now, this is where it gets fucking creepy. You can be of any religion and join Ekinkar. You can be atheist and join Ekinkar, although I'm not sure why you would want to unless you're like me and you just want to join it to have them as a cult. You can be Christian. You can be pagan. You can be Catholic. You can be Mormon. And that makes no sense. Again, this is why they also had to pull from the teachings of all religions. Because if they're going to try to indoctrinate the people of all religions, right, they have to have a little something for each of those religions. So now see, it all makes sense. You see, this is not a cult that is trying to take you away from whatever you believe in and get you to believe what they want you to believe. No, no, no. They want you to hold your beliefs still, but then use them to make your beliefs stronger and get you closer to God. They're the tool of your own belief system. And that gets 10 times more scarier than asking people to leave their belief system for another. When this cult has figured out a way to incorporate your own belief system to use it against you, I need to do a video on it. <laughs> I'm kind of like, what the fuck is this? What do you mean I can be atheist and join? That makes no sense. I told them I was atheist. They're like, that's okay. I was like, what do you mean? That means I don't believe in any of this. How would it be okay for me to join as an atheist? Explain. They were like, we'll still get you there. And I was like, okay. Yeah, no, um, okay. That will be interesting. I'll let you all know how it goes. Don't worry. So again, that's the scariest part to me. That's why when I started to dive into this, I was like, oh, I was going to like get all this together and then do one big drop of a video. But I think we need to like move on this a little bit quicker because this is a new age movement that is trying to take people and tell them that they don't need to leave their current faith to join. Scarier than the ones that tell you you have to leave your current faith to join. There's also a bigger chance that people are going to join this if they don't have to jump ship with their faith. Do you get that? That's why they're doing it. They know it's harder to get people to change from whatever faith they're in into this Ekinkar shit, right? So they've figured out a way to incorporate all of the faith, even atheism apparently, so that you can do this and still get manipulated by them. fucking scary. There are a number of ceremonies an Ekist can experience as part of the teaching, including a consecration ceremony for initiating the young and infants. We're going to get into how they initiate the young and infants and their whole initiation practices in future. They are horrifying. A rite of passage into adulthood around age 13, which we have that as well in the Catholic religion. It's called confirmation. Yeah, I did the baptism, communion, confession, confirmation, blah, 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 blah. And then I found out I couldn't be an altar boy because I was a girl and I got very mad. I'm just sharing that story with you because it pissed me off. A wedding ceremony which every single like religion, even us atheists have a wedding ceremony. Okay. We get someone to come and officiate our wedding. <laughs> so it, that to me doesn't mean anything. Um, that's not like a big red flag or anything and a memorial service, which again, everyone does that upon someone's death, whether you celebrate the life or you mourn their death, have a funeral or whatever. So again, not exactly a red flag. I will tell you if they're just doing normal things that we all do. And then if there's something worrisome, I'll tell you the difference. <clears throat> September 17th. And but I want to try to see how I can get into the celebration of this somehow. Okay. September 17th is celebrated as Founders Day in honor of the modern day founder of Ekinkar, Paul Twitchell. 
I mean, I definitely need to go honor Paul, Paulie there. We we do. And all, how he used to punch out his teachers. We, we should totally do that. October 22nd is celebrated as the spiritual new year. So these guys do a spiritual new year on October 22nd, which if you are unaware is very, very similar to the equinox or solstice that the pagans do in the fall. Um, so again, not necessarily worrisome, right? Like there's nothing wrong with doing like a spiritual new year. The Chinese have their own new year, right? They have Chinese new year. Like there's nothing wrong with that again. It's when that now controls your life that there is an issue like with anything else. So again, th that horrifies me just, just a little bit that they are not asking members to leave their current faith. Ekis believe contact with divine spirit, which they call the Ek, can be made via the spiritual exercises of Ek and the guidance of the living Ek master. In other words, Harold Klemp tells these people everything, how to live. It is held that the Ek masters are here to serve all life, irrespective of religious beliefs. So again, I'm bringing up, this cult is not asking you to leave the belief system that you already have. They want you, literally, to stay in your religion and then let them be your guide, even for your own religion. That is the most horrifying thing to me. I am more used to cults that are like, you have to believe what we believe in than I am to cults that are like, oh yeah, no, you're, 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 you're atheist. Huh? Okay. You're atheist. No, that's cool. You can still join our cult. That should be a big no, no should be a big no, no. And the back of this book horrifies me. The voice of God speaks to us today. And you don't need to be a prophet or saint to hear it. That's funny because apparently it's only the Ek Master that can. Are you one of the millions who have heard God speak through a profound spiritual experience? I don't think so. Did you understand it or find it puzzling? If someone started to talk to me right now, it wasn't my own thoughts. I would start announcing that it is time for that 5150 guys we got to send me in i've lost my damn mind okay where i come from when you're talking to god that's called schizophrenia and, and we now get some people in white coats to come and take you away and i don't understand <laughs> i don't understand this weird world we live in where then these people can claim they talk to god and nobody is like i think this person might have some schizophrenia and they need some mental health help like nobody. They're like, oh, profit. Okay. After reading this book, which, spoiler, this did not happen, and I've pretty much read this whole fucking book twice now, you will emerge with a new perspective on the way you see life. You know, I'm more horrified of the cults out here. That, that That's what happened. The timeless wisdom of Ekinkar can help you understand yourself as soul, an infinite spiritual being well we all know that my soul is dead so that won't help try simple spiritual exercises to help you connect with the light and sound of god for a richer happier life and if the sound of god sounds anything like that song that we listen to i'm good i don't need to hear <laughs> the sound of god at all i just want to bring up to you that this book is five dollars in the u.s uh, they claim on the back of it, $5 in the US. So you're supposed to think that you're getting $5 off when you order this book. Like it's some kind of like, get the book for free. And then you're like, oh yeah, I got $5 off of the book. And then you're supposed to be like happy about it or something. And then at the end of this book too, by the way, they have all of the further readings listed. So they're like, well, now that you've read this book, let me tell you about all of the spiritual books that we have the call of soul the wonderful egg masters past lives dreams and soul travel the autobiography of a modern prophet which don't worry don't worry we definitely want to read harold Klimt's biography in the future 
Oh, do I ever. Because once again, the man wiped all information about him and then wrote his own fucking autobiography. And was like, yes, this is me. <laughs> this is my life. I promise. I'm like, I don't believe you. The art of spiritual dreaming. Animals are soul too. And I'm like, leave the fucking animals alone. <laughs> I'm going to get the SPCA on this thing. A modern prophet answers your key questions about life. And I'm like, how the fuck does Harold Klemp know what my key questions are about life? We've never spoken, but okay. A Mahanta transcript series. And it all has like Harold Klemp's face on it. Like most of these do. Real fucking scared. The spiritual exercises of Eck, because if you didn't know how to waste 15 to 20 minutes of your day singing who, they, they got a whole book for that, guys. A cosmic sea of words. The Eckenkar lexicon. Okay. Eck wisdom temples. Spiritual cities and guides. A brief history. The key to secret worlds. The spiritual notebook. That's nothing like the notebook. Go watch The Notebook instead. The Spiritual Notebook sucks. And trust me, I fucking hate The Notebook. I hate that movie. The Tiger's Fang. That, of course, was the one by Paul Twitchell. Because eh, now we're getting into... He also wrote The Key to Secret Worlds and The Spiritual Notebook. The Ekvidaya, Ancient Science of Prophecy. Also by Paulie there. Like, it just goes on and on and on. The Dream Diary. Then then you can get a, an audio recording of who? A song of a song of love to God or whatever. Which, uh-huh. Yeah, no, I definitely want that on CD. I played it for you. We all want that on CD. <clears throat> and then the fucking bibliography, by the way, is fucking hilarious. It literally just lists all of his own books. I can't make this shit up. I'll show you all in future. It is so funny to me. I'm like, that is your, that's your bibliography. It's just literally all of Harold Klemp's books and Paul Twitchell's books just relisted. <laughs> like, yes, I'm sure that you did. I'm sure that you did base your fucking cult book on the other books that your cult leaders have written. Wow. Hell no. I would have never figured that out if you didn't put it at the end. So, Again, I have joined this lovely cult. Here in Canada, they have their own little sect of it here. I am going to be diving in on September. What was it? They are having their lovely thing. Apparently, something's going to be going down here. I'm trying to find out what I'm going to be joining as a member. I need to get the members area of this thing. We are going to be deep diving this cult, all the writings of it, all the people that are at the head of it, even more. Again, this was only a two hour and 15 minute intro. <laughs> We're going to be getting into all of it. We're going to go through a bunch of the spiritual teachings they do. We of course need to go through the courses they do. Since that's kind of my gig here is I look for cults that teach courses, things like MLMs, because there's just something so much more predatory to me about these cults that want you to pay money to them to teach you how to live your life. Because they seem to all think that you're all dumb and you need a cult leader to tell you how to live your lives. Again, I promise you that you can all figure out this world without that. You do not need some man out here telling you how to be how to think, how to worship, how to do whatever else. You are all more than capable of figuring out life for yourselves and researching why life is here. Why are we all here? What are we all doing here? And etc. We will all find that out by the end of our lives. And if we don't, then I guess we just sucked at living life. And that's the real tea. You don't need that. I, I get very insulted for people of the world when we have men like Harold Klemp like show up and be like, you need me to tell you how to live. And I'm like, no, nobody does. Okay. We never asked for you, sir. We never asked for you. Okay. We never asked for God either. That shit was written before we were alive. So just don't even the cult of queen of Spain. My call would be like an anti call. <laughs> I'd be like, don't worship me. Don't follow me. I am not an influencer. I'm not here to influence you. We're just talking about cult shit. 
If I influence you to not join a cult, that's good. I mean, I'll do that all day long. But other than that, please don't follow me. I'm a mess. I'm a hot mess, but I'm still a mess. And that's kind of the joke here is that you don't need to follow people. That's the whole point of my channel. You don't got to follow someone. You don't need someone on here telling you how to think, how to act, how to be, what to do, how to worship, blah, 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 what to buy, what products to use, etc., etc. That's the point, is that you are all more than capable of making those decisions for yourself without having someone tell you what to do. And that is why these cults are so fucking dangerous. And it's something that everyone in society does seek, all right? We all want to belong. We all want acceptance. We all want to figure out life, why we're here. What the fuck am I supposed to be doing with this 90 years on this earth? It's something that just as the human species, we all, every person in this whole world goes through, okay? If you have someone out here telling you that they've figured out all of the answers of life, they're trying to run a cult on you. Get the fuck away from them as quick as you can. They don't know. Nobody does. That's part of the fun of this life is that you find out as you go. So it horrifies me, these things, these cults that come out and they're like, we're going to tell you how to live. We're going to tell you how to be. You don't need that. You don't. It all needs to stop, but we can't stop it because it, it will just continue on forever. It's beyond us. All we can do is join them as atheists, <laughs> indoctrinate ourselves into the cult, figure out everything about it, and then blast it out to the world. And in my opinion, this one is not being talked about enough. And because of that, I really do feel the need to deep dive it, look through it, get to know Mr. Paul and Harold and even Mr. Goss, Goss if I have to. Don't really want to, but I'll probably need to. And really figure out what the fuck this thing is. Because when we have something like this that is, it's trying to indoctrinate you, but it's like, you can still be atheist, you can be pagan, you can be Mormon, you can be any religion and join this thing. And we'll still accept you into our cult. That is, again, way more scary to me than anything that expects you to leave your belief system for it. More worrisome because there's a larger chance that people will join it. Because let's be real. We're, like I said, we're all looking for a place to belong. So if you have this, this place that says, yes, you can belong here. We will accept you. And guess what? You don't have to change your belief system either. And we'll still take you in and help you throughout your whole life. That can sound like something that you would want to do right? We can all kind of sit back and go, I can see why people want to be a part of these things. See why people join MLMs. We can see why people join cults. I'm not really sure how to counter that other than to tell you that we're all in the same position. We're all searching for those things, but then we all have to stay away from cults that tell us how to get them because that they don't have our answers. Like I said, I don't know how Harold Klemp is going to tell me my spiritual path when we have never spoken. He knows nothing about me, right? But he's apparently going to tell me how to get closer to God. And it's just like, that's not a thing. You cannot do that. You are not some all-knowing being, no matter how much you try. You've gone Bob Larson on me. Calm the fuck down. So going forward, like I said, we are going to be deep diving into this whole thing. We're going to deep dive the crap out of this cult. I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing it weekly, bi-weekly. I kind of just want to do it like whenever I can do it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm kind of like, I don't want to make like a, a schedule and be like, yeah, guys, this is when I am for sure going to be talking about Ekinkar because I just want to kind of go let them try to indoctrinate me study all this stuff and then come out here and talk about it as I want to and I think that'll be more fun for us let's actually talk about how people get indoctrinated while they indoctrinate me I'm going to allow them 
Oh, at least they're gonna think I am. I'm doing a troll up on a on a cult, if you will. Okay, we're doing a troll up on a cult. I have a giant cult, and I am deep diving it. I have the readings. We know who runs it. We looked at a little bit of it today. I have freaked everyone out with some songs, and uh, we're going to be doing this going forward. The more information I find out, the more I will share with you. Like I said, there isn't a lot out there about this, and. Since this is literally the cult of soul traveling, dream traveling, spiritual traveling, since we are seeing these kids on TikTok falling for this without you guys actually realizing what they're falling for, since all of this is now blowing up in our society and they're all like, we're a new age movement, since our society seems to need new age movements right now, a lot of you are going back into paganism and shit, thought we already discussed how witchcraft wasn't real, but whatever. We need to talk about this. It's necessary. I feel like not talking about this would be doing a great disservice to myself, my channel, and everyone else. It will be a good deep dive. And it will be my deepest deep dive ever because I've never actually had to join the cult to get inside it. There's usually information. This one, not so much. As I've stated, not a lot of people have been speaking out about this. And I kind of want to find out why. Because again, when I see a cult that's been going since 1965, has had three leaders of it, I know it's a cult. A lot of people understand this is a cult. But then I don't see a lot of people speaking out about it. There's more people speaking out about Scientology than this one. I go, oh my god, what the fuck is this place doing to people when they leave? And if you know me, you know that I like to study what happens when you leave. What happens when you leave the cult? Do they attack you? Do they come for you? Are there lies? Are there are there a bunch of stuff happening? Because that is what happens. Whenever you leave a cult, that happens. Follow me and you'll see it happen in YouTube cults all the time. So that is all that I have for you today. Like I said, I want to go further into this in future. I just wanted to come on here. I had to rant a little bit about the book. And just my initial thoughts on the stuff that they sent me to try to get me into this thing, which I'm allowing them to do, the music I found, some of the teachings, and we had to just go through what the belief system is, the meat of it, if you will, because I had to today. Okay, I'm, I'm losing my mind over here. I've been working on this thing for weeks already, and I'm losing my fucking mind. And then I got the book before the weekend, last weekend. And I was like, oh, Lord. And I dove into this thing for a few days. Just like, wow, what a cult. How is nobody talking about this? So, unfortunately, that's what we'll be doing on here in terms of how we're going to be starting our, our fall cult time. I still have a few more cults that I'm going to be talking about in future. I do have a Heaven's Gate video coming out. I also have an Aleister Crawley video coming out soon. I am just, you know, doing finishing touches on it and whatnot. And I hope to have those out like by mid-September. And then I think we will be ready to like really deep dive this thing. I feel like then we have talked about a lot of the main cults that get pulled from. So we've talked about Scientology. We talk about paganism. We talk about Aleister Crawley. We talk about Heaven's Gate. We talked about Jonestown. I also have a video on that. You can go check out if you haven't yet. Uh, we talked about Manson. And now I feel like it is time to talk about the New Age cults that are very much still going today. And I also have a 5D full disclosure slash, what do we call it now? Joy Reigns. Yeah, I know. I don't understand the name either. But it is now known as the uh, Joy and Reigns cult. The one with Mother God, who was mummified, is still going as well. People have stopped covering that because they were like, oh, the girl's mummified. Must be over. No. No, it's, it's not, unfortunately. And I've been following that cult as well. We have a TikTok cult I'm looking into. Listen, all right? We got a lot of cults coming. So I hope that you're all in the mood to learn about cults. Because for the next few months, it's pretty much going to be mainly cults on my channel with some com comedic relief of MLMs, maybe some drama. We'll, we'll see how the boys do. And then, you know, comic relief of r slash videos. Because that's why I do those things. Otherwise, you will all get driven insane. 
by just talking about cults all the time. <clears throat> or maybe I'll get driven insane and I actually do it so that I don't get driven insane. I don't know. Maybe I do it for all of us. I guess we'll we'll find out soon. Have a fabulous day. Go do something that you love. Be thankful you're not in a cult. And if you are in a cult and you need some help, go ahead and email me. It's on my channel. I actually have done escape plans for people to get them out. Yes, an escape plan has to be done just like when I had to do an escape plan when I left my abusive relationship and had to move to a new city and live in a woman's shelter. People need to do escape plans to leave cults and multi-level marketing companies. I know, I know. A lot of you think that a lot of this stuff is online so it doesn't indoctrinate you and it's not manipulating and it's not scary, but we live in a new world now where, yes, actually, it does manipulate you. It does indoctrinate you. And you could be in a YouTube cult right now, a YouTube community one, and not even know it. In fact, a lot of you are. And we'll get into that this next year, too. So have a fabulous day. Go do something you love. And I am going to leave you all with one of the lovely songs of this cult. Because we love the songs here. And the cult songs. And I will continue to make bad music to make fun of how people make bad music on here. And then eventually they'll get the joke. So have a fabulous day. Take care. Make sure you like. Make sure you sub. Please share this around. Like I said, this is a fucking scary cult that is preying on people of every single religion and atheism. They tell you you do not have to leave your current faith to join them. There are not a lot of people speaking out about this. That tells me we need to. So let's get it. Let's save people from this thing. Let's tell everyone not to join. And let's go throw some spade at Ekin Carr. And have a fabulous, fabulous day. I'll see you all soon. Mwah. Bye. Now enjoy the cult song. Each speed of the wing of an eagle or a fly, every drop of rain or sunbeam from the sky, every smile of the lover, every gift from above, always in God's time. Ever in God's love Every breath, every cry Every laugh or soulful sigh All your dreams, every teardrop Under heaven's watchful eye See the beauty of your seasons Hear the rhythm from above Always in God's time Ever in God's love Find the music in each moment As the pulsing of your heart Lift your eyes to the eternal See the whole in every part Let the
gems of wisdom spiral upward in the light. See the master in each sunrise and the tender of the night. Every heartbeat of the earth, every star shine from above. Always in God's time, ever in God's love. Find the music in each moment as the pulsing of your heart lift your eyes to the eternal. See the whole in every part. Let the wings of life uplift you. Breathe the air of sacred hue. You will know the sacred blessings of my hunter's love. Let the winds of life uplift you, breathe the air of sacred hue.